This is Jeremy Tesmer with SGTV. 114 years ago, a Swedish painter named Hilma of Klimt painted the first abstract works in the Western world. Five years later, Wassily Kandinsky joined her in that otherworldly realm, where ideas weren't personified, where there was no story, but where a moral, or at least meaning, could still exist. In the early 20th century, the Western world began to consider the possibility of abstract art. It took a while for the ideas to catch hold, first in Europe and eventually in the U.S. This new exhibition, Dreves, Fischinger, Gordon, The Invention of American Abstract Art, hopes to relate some part of the story of how abstract art took root in America. It is also our first presentation from the estates of two German artists who spent the majority of their working lives in America, Werner Dreves and Oscar Fischinger. We compare their works with the work of Sidney Gordon, another immigrant of Ukrainian descent, who studied with Dreves as a talented high school student before going on to his own successful career, a full generation after pioneers like Dreves and Fischinger blazed the trail. As I've been steeping myself in the philosophy that animates these paintings, I've been thinking a lot about how wonderful it is to swirl these philosophical ideas around in my head. They're both gettable and very meaningful. Take Fischinger, for example. He's partly interested in harmonics, both in music and in painting, which were quite connected for him. So he tried to work out how the rhythmic repetition of shapes connects us to a contemplation of time. It can make us think of reproduction, our own and the chain of life that extends way back to the very beginning, or of oscillations that represent sound waves, light waves, and maybe even the movement of subatomic particles. Fischinger, it is helpful to remember, was a credentialed engineer and played violin as a kid. As a teenager, he had worked for a pipe organ mechanic, and he maintained a subscription to Scientific American even when times were very hard. His art combined his love of science with his spiritual yearnings. And so you see these vibrations in his painting, and you get what they're all about. When I love a painting, I often say, it just resonates with me. And I bet Oscar would have loved that. Now, Dreves was chasing something altogether different. He started in graphic arts. After he made woodblock printed invitations for his parents' wedding anniversary party, he set off on a lifetime of visual art practice. Woodblock printing requires a certain amount of simplification, and you very quickly run into the problem of what you might consider positive space and what should be negative space another path to abstraction opened. Hans Hoffman described it as push-pull. You pull the background shapes forward and push the foreground shapes backwards to flatten the image, give it graphic power and mystery. It was a strategy to make images more dynamic, which in turn reflected the new century's rapid changes in virtually every element of society. Dreves' time with artists like Kandinsky and Paul Klee at the storied Bauhaus Art School in Germany convinced him that there was a functional logic at work in the design of both works of art and in the way that nature manifested herself. He brought these ideas to the U.S. in 1930, the year that he made this woodblock. Six years later, he would teach young Sidney Gordon in a class at the Brooklyn Museum, funded by the Federal Arts Project. He would also help found the American Abstract Artists Group. By 1941, Dreves was director of the graphics department for the Federal Arts Project in New York. 
As his fame grew, Dreves was offered a prestigious teaching position at Washington University in St. Louis. By the time he made brilliant light here in 1978, he had moved away from abstracting from the world of things to making paintings of concepts. Suddenly, you get the words non-objective. No thing is being painted. Sidney Gordon started where Dreves left off, although he started there as early as 1939, when he was at Cooper Union Art School in Lower Manhattan. Gordon was born 19 years after Dreves, and the generational difference is startling. Gordon graduated in 1941, devoting his days to mechanical drafting for an aircraft company involved in the war effort, and his nights to drawing, painting, and collage. He also spent a considerable amount of time arguing and theorizing at the club with New York school artists like de Kooning and Franz Klein. Gordon would show extensively with this generation of abstract artists, the one that today commands $100 million plus prices from time to time. But he wound up in California, teaching at UC Berkeley from 1958 until his retirement in 1986 but he maintained a global exhibition schedule with particular strength in New York. When I started at Sullivan Goss, it was common knowledge that you couldn't sell an abstract painting in Santa Barbara. Well, apparently the gallery's reach has grown. Santa Barbara has changed too. So far, 11 out of 30 works have sold. Dreves, Fishinger, Gordon, The Invention of American Abstract Art will be on view through December 28th, and the catalog should be available for sale tomorrow. Come see it.